Hi, I'm Melissa. I am a librarian at our branch in Romeoville, and I'm going to be leading you through the paint and sip this time. So today we are going to make this lovely painting of a bike with a bouquet of flowers. And for this, you'll need a canvas that, um, this one's 11 by 14, but if you want to have a smaller canvas, you can always scale it down to size. You're going to need three paintbrush sizes. You're going to need a larger one that's about an inch and the bristles are going to be a little bit more stiff. That's going to be for the background. And then for the bike and all the details, you're going to need a thicker brush and then a much thinner brush for the more fine details and highlights. Make sure you have a cup of clean water to rinse out your brushes in between colors. One of these which would just be for the paint and then you can mix colors in the middle. If you don't have one of these, you can use a paper plate, but I recommend getting a different paper plate for mixing them because you won't have these little things dividing the colors. A pencil, just for marking out the different parts of the painting. And then you'll need some paint. So for sure you'll need black and white. And then for the rest of the colors, you can either use uh, red, which is kind of your preference. Um, you can make the bike whatever color you want, and then you can make the flowers whatever color you want. I just use red for both, but the flowers could be purple, pink, blue even, I guess, and the bike can really be whatever color you want. So you'll need that color, or if you have primary colors, you can use those three, so red, yellow, and blue to make the brown you need, to make purple if you want it, but you for sure need black and white. All right, so we're going to get started. Oh, and Ariel is going to be here to ask me questions while I am filming the paint and zip. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so before we get started, I'm just going to show you the two practice ones that I did because they're a little bit different. And then you can kind of decide which one you want to go with. So this is the first one. And as you can see, compared to the other one, obviously the bike is a different color. And that's totally up to you, as we mentioned earlier. But this one is a little bit more loud, it's a little bit bigger, the lines are thicker, the highlights are more intense. And this one, the lines are a little bit thinner, it's a little bit more sleek, and the lines are a little bit smaller and more precise. It's completely up to you. It really kind of just depends on the kind of vibe you're going for. But just keep in mind that we're impressionists, we're not going for photorealism, so <laughs> don't try to make it look perfect. Um, so let's get started. So we're going to start off by doing the background. And the background is super easy. So you're going to take your thicker brush, the one that we mentioned that's about an inch thick, coarse brussels. And if you notice in the background, it was just kind of a, a wash of like a grayish beige. So we're going to start by just dipping the very tip of the brush into the white and just kind of doing scattered lines kind of around the whole thing. And then we'll eventually go over and kind of do the same thing, but in more of the beige-ish gray color. And having the white already on there is going to give it that kind of like ombre kind of wash because it's going to mix with the white and it's going to be lighter in some parts and darker in other parts. And you have to cover the whole canvas with the white. The background isn't even going to be completely covering the back or the canvas because that'll just take a really long time to dry and it's not totally necessary. So just giving you a few more just make sure that all general areas are covered. And then we're just going to mix some white with a tiny tiny bit of black. When you're mixing colors to make a lighter color, the dark color you just need such a small amount because it's just going to over the white so much. And make sure, fix it, but make sure that when you're mixing the colors before you go put on the canvas that the colors really mix well on the brush too so that you don't get just like a streak of like straight black because you didn't mix it in good enough. And then we're just going to go in and do the same thing and give it the white. Just kind of making that kind of almost novel looking wash of gray and white. And if you want it, I don't know if you noticed, but in the one of the examples, the back was a little bit more beige in one and the color was a little bit more gray. Really it's up to you, whatever color you want the back to be. If your house is more cool colors, I would go with the gray, but if you have more brown 
add a little bit of brown to the black and the white and make it more of a beige. So while you work on the background, Alyssa, I just want to ask you a few questions. Sure. So the first question I have is how or why did you become a librarian? It's actually a very interesting question <laughs> because I didn't always know that I wanted to be a librarian. It wasn't even until I think it was sophomore year of college that I even knew it was an option really. I went into college um, a psych major with a criminal justice minor, but then didn't really know what I wanted to do with that. And so I was kind of struggling about what I wanted to do. And I was talking to a friend and she mentioned, you know, I'm always reading, you know, what do you do something like that? And so I kind of talked to my advisor. And, um, I had taken a lot of English and history courses just because I enjoyed the subjects and it would have been easy for me to graduate on time with a master's in English and history, which was perfect for going into getting a master's degree afterwards in library information science. And that's what I did. So that's how I ended up being a librarian. Um, and I really enjoy it. I like being able to help people and obviously get to use my creative side a little bit. That answers your question. <laughs> Absolutely, that's wonderful. Okay, so I'm kind of going to stop here. You can keep going if you want and make it a little bit more perfect, but it's going to be covered so much by the bike that it doesn't have to be 100%, you know, perfect. It's supposed to be this kind of a more generic background, not being too, you know, detailed. We have to make sure we let this dry completely before we move on to this thing, or else the colors are just going to mix. So we're going to let that dry for Five minutes should be enough. Since there's not a lot of paint on it, it won't take a super long time for it to dry. Make sure you clean your brushes so they don't dry with all the paint. All right, well, whilst we're waiting for the paint to dry um, for the background, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions if that's okay. So the first question I'm going to ask is, uh, what is your favorite book of all time and why? Of all time and why? Um, I feel like I'm one of those people where the last book I read is my favorite book because if I read a book that I really, really like, I'll read like everything by the author and everything in that subject. I've been really into like psychological thrillers recently. It all stemmed from Gone Girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I really, really like that book. That might be one of my favorite books because I hadn't seen the movie yet. Even though already out so I know what the storyline was and it's based on the Lacey Peterson case and so I thought it was going to be kind of more like that and then the big crazy thing happened and I was just on the edge of my seat the whole rest of the book so amazing book if you haven't read it I highly recommend it. All right and then and one more question was here while we're waiting for the background to dry is what TV show are you currently obsessed with? Well my fiance and I just finished It's Creek and I'm very upset that it's over. <laughs> it did not go on long enough. It should have kept going, but I understand why they stopped. Um, so that's definitely one of them. I grew up watching Psych. I don't know if anyone watching has ever watched that show, but I love that show. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, but it's so fun. Um, the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is another favorite. That one's really good. It's on Amazon Prime. It's about uh, a, wind, a woman comedian in the 50s, I think. It's very, very interesting. It's really fun. It's really, really funny. But I'm not as into sitcoms, which is why I was surprised I liked Shits Creek so much, but it's very different from like Friends, which is fine. But I like the longer, more dramatic shows, I guess. I don't have, I don't know the patience for having this, which is weird because they're shorter episodes, but I need more of a storyline than just, you know, 20 minutes and something new. Let's check to see how dry this is. It's actually pretty dry. So we're going to go ahead and move forward. Um, I would recommend kind of tracing it out with a pencil just because you're probably not going to follow the lines exactly, but it'll give you a chance to mark out your canvas so you kind of know where things are going to go in order to fit everything. So if you notice, there should be a picture somewhere that you can see what the final product is going to look like. But the wheel kind of starts not quite halfway up the side of the canvas, but a little bit below. 
So you probably just want to mark that out a little bit. This might not be my best iteration of this because of the angle, but just draw like a very vague kind of light outline. And it's okay if the line isn't perfect and you kind of go over it a few times and it's not quite lining up what you did before because you're going to paint over all of it. So make sure you have a nice circular kind of outline for that wheel. And then, you know, you kind of want the spokes kind of don't go like right in the middle of the wheel because you're not seeing the whole wheel. The wheel kind of is supposed to go here. So the spoke is going to be in the middle of where it would be if you could see the whole wheel, which is kind of around here. So I just kind of like to mark that out a little bit. And then you just want to follow that up for the bar that attaches to the spokes. And then I just kind of want to draw a little bit of more of a circular outline around the outer rim of the wheel because that's where the uh, the cap goes. I don't know if that's the correct term, but it's going to go right on top of the wheel and like those old fashioned bikes have that piece of metal that goes on top of the wheel. You want to just keep following that up and then just kind of straighten it out a little bit right here where the handlebars will kind of go off. And then the bars of the bike kind of, you know, go off in that like swoopy kind of motion, kind of like, you know, the old fashioned Spanish ones have that more vintage kind of little swoop to it. And then the basket is going to go around here. It's going to sit on top of the wheel, kind of close to the handlebars. You just want to mark that out a little bit, just so you kind of get an idea of where it's going to go. Okay, and then we're going to start with the black paint. I recommend using more of a thicker brush, not thick like the one we use in the background, but thinner and softer, maybe a little bit of a point on the end. And you just want to start painting that wheel. That's the first thing we're going to do. And I find it's easiest to, instead of trying to like make the line in one stroke, just kind of do a lot of like little, little paint strokes. You can kind of Mark it out again with the paint. But it's not going to be perfect the first time, so you can always go over it again. Just. All right, whilst you're working on that, I have another question for you. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Um, well, I've always wanted to go to Scotland. I failed to mention this in former questions, but I'm obsessed with Outlander. Oh my god, yes. So, <laughs> always wanted to go to Scotland. And my fiance knows this, and yesterday, he's obsessed with anything like old and ornate. And so he found this train called the Belmont, which is this really, really fancy, like luxury train you can take through the highlands. And it's amazing. So if I could go anywhere in the world, it would probably be on a train ride on that train. Because the highlands are stunning and the train is beautiful. Everything is like velvet and old wood and it just looks so classy and fun. Like the Orient Express or something, it just looks like a blast. But also, I mean, I'm a sucker for Paris, like anybody <laughs> probably would be. Anywhere that's not my living room, I'm sure we all feel the same way <laughs> with COVID. For sure. Um, also, another tip, um, the inner part doesn't have to be as perfect because we're going to go over that again with um, white and gray to make the inner bit of the metal spokes, you know, on a bike, it's not just, it doesn't just like the spikes don't just go straight into the wheel. There's always that like metal rim that goes on the inside. So make sure more that the outline of the outside is more precise than the inside because we're going to be going over that again. So just keep painting that line all the way through.
And like I said before, you can make the wheel as thick or as thin as you like. If you want it to be more like a shoe and road bike, you can make the wheel thinner, or if you want to go more mountain bike kind of look, you can make the wheel thicker. But once your wheel outline is done, we're going to mix the black with some white, like we did for the background. Maybe you need to add more paint to your thing. So we're going to add all my white from the background, and I'll give you more. I want this gray to be darker than the gray that you used for the background, so closer to black than white. While you're working on the wheel, I'm going to ask you another question. Okay. Have you always liked to do art? Art was always my favorite subject in high school, and it might have just been because there was never any homework, and our art teacher was really, really nice, and we'd always just like have Spotify on, it was just a very relaxed environment, and I loved it. Um, so I've always enjoyed it. I even almost considered being an art teacher in college because it was required at my school to have an art credit. And so I took an art class in college and I really, really liked it. And I guess it was decent enough that my teacher recommended I consider becoming an art major. So I considered that for about five minutes. <laughs> and then <laughs> I was like, eh, I don't know if I could be a teacher or don't do it for a living, so that was short-lived. But I've always enjoyed doing it for fun. Um, or I just found it really relaxing. Because if you're just doing it by yourself, it doesn't really matter if it looks that good. You know? Because you're not a professional, it's not gonna look like somebody's gonna hang in an art museum, but if you spend the time on it, you make it something that you can be proud of. That's great. This one probably is going to be fantastic. But yeah, I would say I've always enjoyed doing art. It's going to be great. Oh, thank you. Part of the affirmation. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now that we've got the gray in there a little bit, we're going to take a thinner brush. You can just put that in the water cup for now. And we're going to put the spokes coming out of the center. So just keep in mind, I messed this up on one of my other ones, but the lines with the spokes have to come out from that center point because that's where they're coming from. You know, on a bike, it's gonna come out from here. And another one, I just kind of like was doing them really randomly and it looks pretty strange. So I find it easiest to take a, a thinner brush and kind of start at where I know it needs to start and just kind of lightly work my way to the outer circle. Not doing one long line, you know, just like one straight shot because you know, your paintbrush isn't going to be saturated in enough paint to make it a super clean line. And then you just want to do it over and over again. And like I said before, compared to the two painting I showed you at the beginning, you can do as many or as few lines as you want. If you want to make them more subtle, you don't have to do as many. If you want to make them more pronounced, you can make it a thicker line and you can do more of them. It's really more a matter of preference than anything else. It's always harder to do the longest ones because my hands are the steadiest, so I'm not going to be perfect. But that's okay. This is probably one of the hardest parts. And most times, I have to say, because you have a small brush, you try to make a lot of precise lines.
And it's okay if the line isn't, you know, super, super saturated with paint because in real life, these would be metal and they would be reflecting the light. So it's not always gonna be like a perfectly straight gray line. So it's okay if there's not as good. Stop if you can keep going if you want. And then I just kind of like to touch up just a little bit. Of that. Just a little bit with a smaller brush. And now we can go to the more fun part, which is the bigger, brighter lines. So I am going to go for a red bike, because as a kid I always wanted a red bike. And I'm going to use the same brush that I used for the wheel. A thicker brush because there's like the lines and it would just take a really long time to use a smaller one. Okay, so we're gonna take the red and we're gonna start with this uh, hubcap thing. I don't know what it's called. I'm sure that's not the right word. And you're just gonna follow the line of the bike tire. We're just kind of marking this out too, so again, it doesn't have to be totally perfect, just so you get the line and you know where it needs to go. to almost a point at the end and then kind of flatten out towards the bottom so it kind of has more point at the front. I'm sure you can see that more in the example. And you just going to keep following this line. Down to the bottom. Kind of close that off in a similar fashion where it's a little bit pointy at the end. So we're just going to keep filling in the red. We're going to start making it a little bit higher in the middle and then bringing it back down and tapering it more at the bottom. And then just keep going over where the paint is on there a little bit light and you can still see the canvas through. That's so more of a solid red line. And I'm already going over the pencil lines that I drew. I'm already a little bit off, but that's okay. Because this is we're only really there for us to see how the painting was going to fit into the canvas. Just so you knew where to start. And they were never going to be perfect anyway. So that's perfectly fine. Okay. So once you're happy with the general shape, we're just going to keep moving on. We'll get into highlights later. So then we're just going to follow this line up. And this is just going to be, you know, like the main bar where the handlebars come out of the top of and where the rest of the bar is coming down the body of the bike will come from. You kind of want to slide it in to the bed hub cap you made so they connect nicely. And then you're just gonna follow those shoes down. Again, yeah, they don't have to be perfect. Don't be afraid of just you know, getting in there and making that line. It doesn't have to be in the same spot where the pencil mark was. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. Because we're gonna be going over this again with white to make the highlights, so the shape is going to change a little bit anyway. Just make sure that the edges 
for the most part, are more of a solid red line and not a little bit patchy. The red can be put away for right now. Because right now, while that dries just a little bit, we're going to move on to the basket that's going to go right about here. And so for this, you can either use the brown paint you already have, or you can, you know, mix your primary colors and your black and make more of a brown. I'm going to start off with this darker brown. I'm just going to start lightly, just kind of shaping in this basket, just kind of a rough idea of where I want it to be. For the big basket, I'm going to be covering this whole part on top of the bike. And it's just going to rest on top of that red wheel cover thing we did earlier. And since baskets are, you know, typically made of like wicker and like wood, you know, it's not going to be a perfect straight line that you just, you know, draw with the paint. It's going to be a little bit more bumpy. So I don't know if you can tell, but I'm just kind of dabbing the paintbrush on there in like short little taps just to give kind of more of a wispy kind of texture, I guess would be a word I'm going for, just so the edges aren't totally clean. I'm just going to keep doing that just to fill up the space. And if you want to, you know, make bigger brush strokes to kind of like fill the space that's fine but then I would just go over it with this kind of like tapping technique so you can get the clean line in there faster but then you kind of want to cover that clean line with more of that textured kind of paintbrush movement just so it all looks uniform. And if you want you can always leave it like this it doesn't have to be anything more than this, but I have a lighter brown color. And you can always just add white to whatever brown color you made before. I'm just gonna go in there with the lighter brown just to add a little bit of highlight. You know, what usually is all the same color. So you kinda wanna add that depth of the lighter color to give it a more realistic kind of look. And then go over it some more with the darker one, and we're gonna do as long as you want. So that's kind of where I'm gonna break, and we're gonna start doing the flowers, which seem intimidating. But I promise you that it's actually one of the easiest parts of this whole thing. So I'm just going to take my example really quick and just show you. So if you look closely at the flowers, they are just a lot of like little brush strokes of different colors. So we're going to start with the green and kind of do like some sweeping little petally looking lines and some longer ones for the stems. And just kind of with a similar technique we did with the basket, just kind of tap in different shades of greens to give it that depth. And then the flowers are really just kind of the same kind of thing, you know, using your brush to make little shapes and then filling it with white. So I'll show you a little bit more specifically right here. So we're gonna take the red again, the same red you were using for the bike. And we're gonna use two different colors of green. 
Like I said, um, if you're using just, you know, primary colors, you can just mix, you know, blue and yellow to make green. And then you can add a little bit of black or a little bit of white to make it lighter or darker. So I'm going to start with my lighter green. And I'm just going to start going in here with little sweeps of my brush. Just little wisps here and there. You know, some longer ones coming out of the top. Just kind of making a lot of little wispy brush strokes. Just to kind of resemble leaves. You kind of want it to come down out of the basket because, you know, baskets full of flowers, some of them are going to spill out a little bit. And you're just going to keep going in there and it does look weird to kind of be making these little shapes just kind of like in empty space. But the whole thing is going to get filled up. So you kind of want to get in there with this color as much as you can at first because you don't want the colors to mix as much as you want them to lay on top of each other. That makes sense. We're doing layers. We're not, you know, completely mixing the colors. So we're going to do another little whisk in there. And again, you don't have to do the exact same thing I'm doing. You know, you don't have to put your lines in the same spot that I'm putting my lines, you know. It's kind of wherever you want them. Because it's kind of going to have the same effect once it's all done. So once we've kind of done that, we're going to take our darker green and just kind of, you know, throw it in there among the low lines you've already made. Kind of to give it more depth, give it a little bit of shadow. We're just tapping it in there, just little wisps. Nothing too perfect, nothing too precise. If you look at any Impressionist painting up close, it kind of looks like a little bit of a mess, but far away, it all comes together and forms a very pretty picture. And that's kind of what we're going for here. Like I said before, this isn't going to be photorealistic. No one's going to think it's a photograph. That's not what we're going for. And you kind of want this whole area kind of close to the basket to be green. And don't be afraid to mix it a little bit with the brown that's already on there. It'll just, you know, give it more of a lifelike color because flowers have brown in them too, they're not totally green. But the bottom of a bouquet of flowers is going to be mostly green because that's where all the stems are and the leaves are, so we're just going to keep making some lines. And you can keep going over it again with the light green if you think you've got too much dark green in there. But once you're going to have you with how the green looks, we're going to wash out the same paintbrush. So just don't get in your apple bar. Dry off the paintbrush on your piece of paper towel. And then we're going to take the red paint and just kind of start making our little flower shapes. I'm not even sure if this is meant to be a real flower or just flower looking shape that we're painting. But you just kind of want to go in with these kind of almost wide semicircle kind of strokes. Maybe throw a few down there, maybe some flower petals that you know, fell off the flowers. And you want a few flowers. So just kind of start making these Flower-ish shapes, you know, wherever you think you want a flower. I'll show you a close-up in just a second. I'm gonna make some right down here. You know, some smaller flowers that might be in the back of the bouquet that you're not seeing so clearly on the top. And it's okay if you get a little bit of green on the paintbrush because it'll just kind of work as a shadow in your flowers because flowers have a lot of depth, there's a lot of light and shadow in flowers. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a close up here to what I just did just so you can kind of get an idea of what you're going for. 
So if you see here, we've done all the little wisps of green and light green, and then we've done our little flower shapes. So then we're gonna start adding some highlights. Okay, so we're gonna take the same brush. We're gonna wash it out a little bit, get the red out of there. Wipe it off on the cloth. And then we're gonna take the white. And we're literally just gonna go over the red lines we already made. And just the same kind of shapes, but smaller and closer to the center. So it kind of gives that petal kind of feel to it because both paint is the red and the white is still wet. So instead of just a stark white sitting on top of the red, it's mixing in and making it sort of pink. So that when it all comes together, it just looks like flower petals that have a lot of depth to them, which is what we're going for. And once you've made the highlights and you want to add more red, maybe you added too much white in one spot and you want to make it a little bit more red, you can just keep going over it until you're satisfied with what it looks like. your flower basket. Done. And so while we have the white and red on our paintbrush already and we've given these lines a little bit of time to dry, we're going to go into some highlights. And we're going to do the same kind of thing we did with the flowers and we're just going to put some highlights where we think they should be. And then it's not going to be perfect, you know there's going to be some highlights on the top of there. We're just going to throw some ones on and around this little cap thing. Just a few small lines on the top and in the center. Wherever you think the sun will catch it. And then we're going to do the same thing on these bars. Just Scatter some white lines in there so it looks like metal reflecting sunlight. Something in there. Get in there in a few spots. And it's okay to go when you need a little overboard of the white because you can always go over it with red and just kind of tame any lines that you think you've gone a little bit to move a little with just to tone it down a little bit. Okay. And once you're happy with how that looks, we are going to rinse our brush off once again and do our handlebars. So the handlebars themselves are going to be gray. And then you can make the you know, part of actually the hand grip kind of any color you want. I think I'm going to make it the same color as the bike, so I'm going to make them red. You can also do black or you can do white. Just kind of a personal preference. So we're going to make some more gray. Sure that your paintbrush is clean so you don't get, you know, a real pinky gray. We want about the same gray that we used for this area here, some kind of a darker gray. So the handlebars are just going to come out of the top part right here. And again, these don't have to be perfect, but this one's going to come down like that. And then this one is going to come out like that. And the top one is going to be just a tad bit shorter than the bottom one. Just kind of give them those sweepy kind of shapes similar to the shape we did down here. And then just kind of join them together by a gray line. 
going down toward the top of this bar right here. And then since the basket needs to be connected to the bike somehow, we're just going to draw the dot. Two little gray lines right there. That's kind of a bracket that's going to be holding that up. And the same way that we've done highlights everywhere else, we're just going to add some highlights to the handlebars too. Just throw some white in there. Just give it a little bit of a shine. Last time, I promise, we're going to rinse off our brush one more time. And we're going to take whatever color you want to use for the hand grips. Like I said, I'm using red. And we're just going to go in there and draw our hand grips. So it's just going to be, you know, little ovals that kind of highlights, you know, so you can take as long as little time as you want. You can make it more precise or a little more big and bold. Then once you're happy with the finished product, you can declare it done. And don't forget to sign up so people know that it's yours. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I hope you had a good time with us doing our paint and set. These are kind of what the final products look like for me. But like I said, a lot of times, you know, it's really up to you how you want it to look. It's not going to be perfect, um, but you know, it's going to look beautiful. And if you enjoyed it, then that's what's important. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, you can go ahead and give it a like and keep an eye out for the rest of our videos. We're going to do other painted tips. Maybe if you have some suggestions about what you would like to see, mention it down in the comments and we'll keep it in mind for other painted tips in the future. So thank you.